All right, guys, so in this example here, we have air enclosed in a rigid insulated tank fitted with a paddle wheel, and we have the initial pressure, temperature, and volume of that air given at 4 bar, 40 degrees Celsius, and 0.2 cubic meters. We're going to stir that air with the paddle wheel, and then that, that air is going to heat up to 353 degrees Celsius, and we can assume the ideal gas model with a specific heat capacity of 1.4 for the air, and we're asked to determine the final pressure of the air in bar, the work in kilojoules, and the amount of entropy produced in kilojoules per uh, Kelvin. We can also ignore kinetic and potential energy. So here's a schematic. Here's our tank right over here. And over here we have our paddle wheel. I did forget to add, though, that it is insulated. So I'm just going to go ahead and add the insulation. So a couple of things um, that may not be obvious to you besides what's given is the fact that it uses this word here, rigid, means that we're going to have constant volume. Um, so at state 1, you'll have your volume of 0.2 cubic meters, but at V2, you're also going to have 0.2 cubic meters. They're going to be equal because it's rigid. There's nowhere for that air to expand. Um, and then the other thing is, like I mentioned uh, a little while ago, that it is insulated so that means that there's going to be no heat transferring in or out so i'll say that q dot is equal to zero all right so part a is going to ask us to find that final pressure in bar so that should be pretty simple so we can apply the ideal gas model here and if we do that we'll have that pv equals m r t now, the next thing you can notice is that M and R, these two variables right over here, are going to be constant on uh, either side of the equation on, on in state 1 or state 2. Um, so I'll pull that aside and say that MR equals PV over T. And this is going to be equal on, like I said, both sides of, um, of the equation, so both states, 1 and 2. So I'll have the P1 V1 over T1 is equal to MR, but again, MR is also equal to P2 V2 over T2. Now, the next assumption that we took is that uh, V1 is equal to V2. So what we could do is we could say that P1 over T1 is equal to P2 over T2, because if we divide both sides by the variable V, then um, we can simplify, simplify this expression. So now let's plug in our knowns here. So we have an initial pressure of 4 bar. So 4 bar divided by T1. T1 was given as 40 degrees C. I'm going to convert into Kelvin. Um, so I'll say 313 Kelvin. You just add 273. And that's going to be equal to our final pressure in bar divided by our final temperature. Our final temperature was 353 C, which would be 626 Oops, 626 Kelvin. Uh, now, the next thing you can do is just isolate for P2. And if you do, you'll have that P2, just some cross multiplication here, P2 equals 8 bar. That's your answer to part A. Now, to find the work in kilojoules for part B, what we can do is we can apply the first law of thermodynamics, which just says that zero equals the heat transfer minus the work plus the mass flow rate, or sorry, just the mass, because we're doing this on a closed system, so we're not going to be using mass flow rate or power. We're going to be using bulk form, which is work and just mass. So we'll have mass times, uh, we'll have actually eight, series of variables in here we're going to have the change in internal energy u1 minus u2 if this was an open system we'd be using enthalpy but for closed we're going to use specific internal energy and we're going to add the kinetic energy which would be v1 minus v2 and those both get squared this is your kinetic energy of course plus your uh g z one minus Z2, which is your potential energy. But of course, we were told right over here to ignore kinetic and potential energy, which I noted right over here as well. And so therefore, we can zero both of those out. Also, no heat transfer because we have an insulated tank. So we can pretty much simplify this expression all the way down to that our work is equal to 
our mass times our change in internal energy. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this equal to the mass times the specific heat with constant volume times the change in temperature T1 minus T2. And the reason I'm doing this is because we have an ideal gas here being air, and we're also told that we have um, a, sp a specific heat capacity of 1.4, so we can take that as constant specific heat, and uh, therefore this expression is valid, and it should save us some time from having to go to the property table to get our U1 and U2. So now let's try to plug in what we have here. So we have W, our work, equals the mass, which actually we don't have, but we can easily calculate that up here, right? So let's go ahead and use our ideal gas law here. So we'll, we'll just use everything at state one. So we'll have a pressure of 400 kilopascals. We need to make the units work out. So I just recommend you keep everything in kilopascals. So we'll have 400 kilopascals for pressure one. And for volume one, we have 0 0.2 cubic meters. And we're going to have that equal to our mass times our gas constant. And well, what is our gas constant? The gas constant R is equal to the universal gas constant divided by the molar mass of air in this case. So the gas constant should be equal to 8.314, the units being kilojoules per kilomole Kelvin. And we're going to divide that by the molar mass of air which if you go to table A1 and you just go right over here, you'll have the molar mass as 28.97. So 28.97, and the units on that again is kilograms per kilomole given in that table. Now the kilomoles and kilomoles will cancel out and you'll be left with kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin, which is what we want. And you'll have a value, of course, as 0 0.287 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. Sorry about the really small writing here. Uh, lots and lots to write for this problem. So we'll, we'll go ahead and throw that into our equation up here. So 0 0.287 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. And close the brackets on that. And then our temperature at state one was 40 degrees C, which is, of course, 313 Kelvin. So times 313 Kelvin. And now if you just isolate for M with some simple algebra, you'll have that the mass is equal to 0 0.8906 kilograms. Now let's plug that into our work equation down here. We have 0 0.8906 kilograms and now we need to multiply that by our specific heat with constant volume so now how do we get that well to get that we just have cv equals the gas constant divided by the specific heat capacity minus one which is equal to 0 0.287 287 divided by 1.4 minus one in the units here would be kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. There's no units on specific heat capacity because specific heat capacity is a ratio uh, between the specific heat of volume and pressure, which would cancel out your units. But nonetheless, if you plug this into your calculator here, you'll have that the specific heat is equal to 0 0.7175 kilojoules per kilogram kelvin so that's important to use here so multiply that in there 0 0.7175 kilojoules per kilogram kelvin now we just do our difference in temperature of 313 kelvin minus 626 kelvin this is why i like to always just convert everything to kelvin when i can Truthfully, I like to also do it with kilopascals. I probably should have done it here, but the answer was uh, supposed to be in bar, so I left it in bar. Um, so now we have our work equals negative 200 kilojoules. So that is the answer to part B. And last but not least, we need that amount of entry produced in kilojoules per Kelvin. So 
new unit here being entropy for chapter six. So to find entropy, the total change in entropy is equal to the mass times the difference in specific entropy, which would be little s2 minus s1, just like we've seen for specific ent enthalpy and specific uh, volume and specific internal energy. Um, it's, it's really the same case here. Now, because we assumed that the um, heat capacity or the, sorry, the specific heat is constant in this problem, I'm going to use the following expression, which should be valid in this case. So for an ideal gas with constant specific heat, we can say that S2 minus S1 is equal to the specific heat with constant volume times the natural log of the ratio of T2 over T1 plus the gas constant R times the natural log of the ratio of volume. Now, to save ourselves some work here of having to fill in a bunch of numbers, we can go ahead and eliminate this whole expression in the back. And the reason we can do that is because we know that V2 equals V1, this expression here is going to be the natural log of 1, which is always equal to 0. So this whole expression here is equal to 0. So now we just have to work with pretty much this area of the expression here. So we'll have that S2 minus S1 is equal to the specific heat of 0 0.7175 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin times the natural log of this temperature ratio of 626, oops, 626 Kelvin divided by 313 Kelvin. So now we just have to plug this into our calculator, and when we do, we'll have that our change in specific entropy is equal to 0 0.4973 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. And again, that's the change in specific entropy, not the change in total entropy. To get that change in total entropy, we just have to multiply by our, by our mass, as indicated right over here, and our mass is given or calculated as 0 0.8906 Kelvin, or sorry about that, kilograms. So we'll have 0 0.8906 kilograms. And we're going to multiply that by 0 0.4973 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. And these uh, kilograms will cancel out. And you'll have your final answer of 0 0.8906 four, four, three kilojoules per Kelvin.